entirety of the series. So, I mean, it's just going to come down to raw performance. No advantages in the Warlock on one team over the other on this map. Mirror compositions coming out for a match in the upper portion of the bracket. Who is going to get that next seat? Tuple is con. Will it be Free Marcy or will it be Method NA? It all starts right here. Here we are again, close. Here we are. We're going to expect to see both teams pulling right away. We do see Method and A on the left side of the screen immediately pulling all the trash to the side, getting ready for the rest of the group to skip through. They'll res on the other side. Free Marcy doing the same thing, the same vein. Brath going down there as well. They'll get those reses up and then expect to see one pretty large pull in that kind of foyer leading up to Naltira or, of course, to Corselax on the right side. I'm going to be curious to see if they opt to use their bloodlust tiers. Half yeah. the teams do and half the teams don't. Yeah, especially considering, that, you know, as well, as you said, they do have options where they want to go. Let's hope that it's a little bit more clean uh, when it gets to that eventuality than uh, some of our previous games or even just the one previous game that we actually had. But the big bull coming out now with that Sky Step Potion, just looking to pull as much as possible around here. And then maybe even get a little line of sight off if you can, uh, just to make sure that we're all going to group up. An equally meaty pull from both parties here is Brath. Both bloody kids run around the core there just to get that LOS up. The AOE grip comes out and Bloodlust comes out indeed on both sides. Cushman getting quite low there for a moment already, but getting healed right back up. Bandane getting chunked down as well. Heals back up with a good death strike, making sure to move the mobs out of these zones and getting as many interrupts and silences as we see some of those arcane torns coming out from the Blood Elves, kiting around in circles and making sure that the tank stays safe here in this enraged environment. Yeah, you actually want to make even more moves away from the purple puddles on the floor because, because it is volcanic. Sometimes they can actually spawn right in those and you don't necessarily want to be right next to it once it actually pops uh, so they position themselves well to make sure they can mitigate some of that damage both teams moving so quickly as to still have a bit of that bloodless left moving downstairs and no surprise that both teams move over right to that chaos bringer immediately just to get that control uh, from the warlock immediately and get those buffs rolling right away I assume that both teams are going to start to head over up to Zakal, the first boss, or well, actually any of the first four bosses yeah. can be the first boss, <laughs> but usually we do see them jump up to Zakal first. Yeah, that's true. And uh, again, as we said, hopefully it's a little bit cleaner. You know, in our previous desk, they were like, oh, 50 minute arcways. That didn't quite work out then, uh, but maybe it'll work out here. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> as the rest of the spiders are pulled up now, Marcy does have a death over for Arrow, uh, intended, of course, as we see subs move over to the side, getting ready to res everybody that needs to be res downstairs. Uh, the rest of the team is, of course, finishing up some of the trash as we can see at the top of the steps in the distance on the right side of the screen. We're already getting the precast for the revitalize as Wrath finally goes down for free Marcy. They will res up and indeed, indeed pulls a call, but we're actually seeing methods start with Naltira, the spider boss over there on the left side of the screen first. Yeah, interesting choice to do, of course, and uh, with this, you know, I would hope that, you know, the monks have got themselves well set up because when they actually get bound together, at least you can just teleport straight away. I think you can, on the very edge of the screen, you might be able to see one of those. Uh, and that's not too bad. Also, the blink strikes are very important to be dodging as well repositions uh, with that blink and then start swiping away. All you have to do is move away from the front of it, so it's not too bad. Free Marcy pulling the trash over with Zakal here. Now, the Seer is the most dangerous mob here, as we do see a Prophecies of Doom cast as that Enrage goes up. Enrage, of course, being that extra 100% damage on trash mobs once they go below 30% health. Fortunately, you are able to displace them, so we see the grip come out of Wrath right away there, and honestly, that would actually wipe the group if that Prophecies went off. So well played there by then. They do finish off the trash and are now just continuing to work on Zakal, making sure they move around the room in kind of circular motion, getting rid of those pillars on the side, getting away from them, rather, and making sure to bait that frontal slash into the walls on yeah. the sides. Oh, yeah, that does a lot of damage if you actually get hit by it, but usually it's, you know, well telegraphed enough to be able to dodge, and also the swirlies towards the bottom of the ground as well. Don't want to get hit by any of those purples, and obviously you don't want to go in towards green circles either. So plenty of things that you need to be dodging here on Zakal, and overall they're doing fine. And likewise, Naltira, though, is melting quite nicely on the side of Method NA. I, I really thought Method NA would have gone over to Zakal, but it seems I've been caught in their web of lies once again <laughs> as they start to finish off Naltira. I do expect that after this they will head over to Zakal. It would be very inefficient for them to actually go back to the right wing and then yeah. all the way over. Uh, Coach Mid getting quite low there but manages to hang on. Naltira getting to that 1%. They have to be careful with how far they drag the boss actually in that direction. I have had it on live where you get <laughs> just a bit too far into that direction. The boss actually ends up resetting because you're trying to be a bit cheeky and save those extra seconds. No worries for them there. Free Marcy down to 47% on Zakal. Yeah, not quite the thing you want in a speed run. I'm just going to pull this patrol and uh, from that point on deal with it. Again, it's a Seer, so it is quite dangerous, but alone it's not too bad. Quite controllable, uh, while uh, Zakal's dying on the other side here for free Marcy. Uh, one that's the in interesting thing that to note, though, is that Method NA, when we were talking to them, said that Arcway is their happy place. Like, no 
beating around the bush, nothing. So uh, it seems like they feel very, very confident to take this first win and then try and snowball that in the series. I, I mean, the thing with Arcway being your comfort pick is, the thing is it's forced. Uh, as we can yeah. see here, it's one of the forced maps if you're in the upper bracket. So I, I would hope and assume that it's everybody's handy yeah, pick true. and everybody's good map. Finally, we see the wipe coming down, the purposeful wipe on Method and A as JB is already positioned upstairs. We'll start casting that Revitalize in a moment. There it is to res the team up as Free Marcy have done earlier. They are now at 13% on the call, taking a fair bit longer to down the call uh, yeah. compared to Method's uh, destruction, quite frankly, of Naltira. Keep in mind, both teams use Lust on the trash at the beginning. I mean, this is actually a good point that you bring up, though. I'm expecting to see maybe a little bit of a quicker kill from Method NA on the side here against the call. We'll see, though. Um, but it has taken Free Marcy quite a bit of time. Uh, they've been quite, I guess, slow about it, if anything. It's it's a small nitpick to make, but I'm going to have to do it, unfortunately. Interesting, though, Method did not opt to pull the trash with Zakal here. They actually got everything, uh, all the trash by itself first, and then we'll pull Zakal over. Maybe they'll pull a bit towards the end, but certainly a less risky play, but one that did pay off for Free Marcy. They're just waiting for that Seer at the bottom of the stairs. Free Marcy, of course, on the right side of the screen to move over to Naltira, the spider boss that Method had previously downed. They do move in, grab the Fell Blade. We can already yep. see the Chaos Bringer on the left side. Part of this pack has already been MC'd. Uh, mind control, of course, by the uh, Warlock, and they're getting ready to pull Zakal here. Okay, Chaos are very, very useful in this instance. So this is a call fight is going to begin. Likewise, on the other side here, Free Marcy, they're going to be cleaning up those spiders. And, you know, we've just done about mm, three minutes of this, and uh, we're going to be doing exactly the same, but just in reverse. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Three percent down on the Warlock over on Free Marcy. Manages to hang on, and they do move out, getting ready after the spiders have died to deal with Naltir in just a moment. It's a call already down to 69% for Method and A as some of these fell bats start to drop down. Not really too much of a threat to them drop down at once the tank just kind of picks them up tanks them on top of the boss and everyone happily cleaves them down but even still i mean i feel like this is a call kill is going quicker which is a little bit of a concern here for or would be a concern for free marzi had they actually they actually know what the progress currently here of method na so uh, as long as method na is able to keep up with this kind of pace uh, it's going to be a little bit worrying here for free marzi no i'm aware that i did say that there's mind control from the warlock i know it's uh you know it's not safe. called that but yeah i, I say it on purpose i don't say it on purpose rather because i don't Norwich left saying slain demon and I'm just gonna <laughs> my butt later for saying that but it's a call down to 33% for method NA making sure that they have it over in the corner they are kind of surrounded by these pillars certainly don't want to be touching those uh, green void zones if you will on the ground it does a ton of damage uh, it essentially will one shot you any player that comes into contact except maybe the tank already kind of starting to kite the call into the corner so that they maximize the efficiency from movement once the boss dies but they might find themselves in a precarious position here because they're kind of getting the room cut off with that slash there not to mention all the void zones coming down. Yeah, I really want that to dissipate, and it will do indeed. But I, you bring up a really good point, which is I think just in general, Method NA's damage has been good because their movement has been good, right? When it comes to d even just not only dealing with the boss mechanics, but also dealing with the volcanics that they've been baiting almost a little bit, and then just being able to move back towards the boss to get the damage done efficiently. Method well doing there, uh, doing well there, excuse me, to finish off the Chaos Bringer and re enslave the first Chaos Bringer that they used at the top of these stairs, now soon to be moving past N Naltiria room where they've of course already were killed the boss chaos bringing it they're getting asphyxiated by band name as he gets that five second stun making sure it doesn't get any cast on anyone stun dissipates we get the enslaved demon up and the team rifles past the room free marcy actually just having now down Naltiri as well so they're actually quite neck and neck at the moment yeah despite the little change in the route and we're seeing even marvin throwing down that uh, the portal just so you can have a little bit of escape extra just small movement uh, advantages and we're going to see them moving on into the next room just getting quite a few of these withered fiends and maybe grouping them pump and getting a lot of AoE damage on them for some extra percents. There will be a massive AoE pull here whether or not it's with the boss. They actually missed uh, one of the spell swords on the edge there as it was casting its mm. shield. Corsalax does come in. Now these bubbles on the ground of course for those at home do give 50% haste buff to anything standing them. Boss, trash and players included. Nothing that they can't handle. Look at the damage coming out of those Windwalkers and not far behind <laughs> is Marvin. The trash gets absolutely decimated and the rest of the team starts working on uh, the boss himself now picking up the extra zones part of the boss mechanics here that give you 20 percent haste per stack free marcy not far behind having done the pull as well themselves but without mm. the boss here and Kolaris, you keep saying but you keep saying small things here small things there it really is coming down to small things yeah two deaths for free marcy they don't have that battle res and just two percent trash difference between the two teams not too much difference at all yeah definitely and the one thing that's important about this room with costalax etc is those haste bubbles that you can use uh, it really kind of helps them a lot here when it comes to say the 
fixes that they're going up against. It's not that impactful to go up against, like, Enraging and Volcanic, say, if unless they were going up against something like Necrotic. If you're in those bubbles with all that trash, that's going to stack up very quickly and be able to put you in a terrible position. But pulling in more trash here, uh, so really good uh, patience, really, out of Method NA to be able to kind of get even more damage done while killing off Corsalax, which isn't exactly the most taxing of bosses. No, of course not, and really smart by them, too, because you do get that haste buff on Corsalax, so mm. they pull those two warp shades in. The only danger to those mobs is just you have to babysit them for their cast, and of course, they cast... Ooh, Ooh. Marvin getting so low there, but manages to hang on. They do cast that heal sub 50%, but no problem for this team with the yeah. amount of damage they have, especially in that haste situation. Already pulled an extra pack ahead as they start to move towards Ivanir's room, the uh, fourth or penultimate boss to the dungeon, making sure they grab yeah. this Forgotten Spirit first, which could be just such a big pain in the butt, depending where they're patrolling the dungeon. And make sure you interrupt all of those torments as well, because you definitely don't want those going off uh, too much. Uh, one of the important things to note is Bad Names Purge did go off during all of that. It must have been the big pull, and, and it's gone. But, but, I mean, that just means now that JB will just focus a little bit less on DPS and just focus maybe a bit more on Bad Name if he's going around that 50% health mark. And we, of course, all know how much JB loves DPSing mm -hmm. instead of healing. <laughs> the Forgotten Spirit does go down. Now, we've seen some pretty large pulls from some of the teams in the prior series in this dungeon in this specific room coming up. Looks like they're just playing it a bit slow. We did see someone sneak off screen there to presumably pull a lot of trash yeah. and bring it back LOS around the corner as Dark, one of the two Windwalkers, does indeed reappear on the screen with another anomaly and I don't think he pulled the worms too so it's just the two anomalies for now after which I assume we're going to do a fairly sizable pull free Marcy still at 16% on court locks. Yeah some of these anomalies aren't too big an impact as long as you're able to dodge against the slicer get the interrupts on some of their other abilities uh, but the slicer really is the one that if we get hit by that a slicer means slicer you're going to get sliced off it's not it's not a pretty time. <laughs> That's, that's, I can't disagree with what I say. Band name going down to 1%. He didn't have Perg available, as you mentioned earlier, so they kind of got a bit lucky there. No death on the tank. It wouldn't have been that bad in the end. I mean, mm -hmm. the trash was dead. He could have released in course Lax's room. Nonetheless, no extra five seconds plus the run back accrued for the team. They pulled the entire room except for the two, um, uh, the two sentries right in front of Ivanir. Grip it all together. Coach oh goes down right away. He's going to have to release right back in course Lax's room. Fortunately, they have quite good mobility, Monks do, and he'll be able to be back in action in no time time as most of those worms go down immediately and you just have to make sure to babysit those warp shades. I really like the use of the wallop portal to get right in on the action just as those mobs are actually hitting the tank when he's positioned them correctly. Just again min-maxing things is nice. Band name though, just nerves of steel to not have Perk get in there, come back. He's going to be taking some damage as he was on 30% health anyway uh, but you know once he's got everything together and popping consumption he's basically back at full health and doing well. It should be no shock that these two anomalies will be likely pulled with Ivanir getting that mm -hmm. extra cleave damage on them and as you said earlier really not too dangerous just want to make sure you interrupt the self heal that they cast sub 50 yeah. percent in a moment bloodlust pops off for method getting a ton of damage and if an is a pure caster boss he will solely cast on the tank just those arcane blasts dk well equipped to just self heal through that and of course we do have these uh tethers on the players yep. that they will have to form uh, everybody's favorite shape the triangle somewhere in the room so here we have these nether links going out players will have to run out and try to deny as little real estate as they can to the rest of the group. I'm just waiting for one of our teams to create a Triforce, and then I'll be completely happy with that. That would be nice. Automatic uh, win. Yeah, automatic win. It's, it's done from that point on. Um, but it's interesting to see how they actually deal with them, because in our previous series, of course, we saw that everybody just kind of moving back and being able to overlap them with one another, and that was a really nice control on it. You can see uh, Method NA is opting to position them on the right-hand side. Ooh. That's a lot of damage. Monks, be careful. You're fragile human beings. Oof. Oh, I mean, they're not really human beings. No, they're, they're, they're blood holes. But we do see the next <laughs> triangle go down pretty close to an, um, a, 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 excuse me, a new collateral there, but uh, yep. more of an isosceles that time. They do mm. move around. The boss is kind of trapped in the middle there. You can move the boss if the tank just kind of runs out of range as you can see Bandane trying to kind of bob in and out, trying to get Ivanir just out of that corner because it does take for a lot of damage. Occasionally, Ivanir will then, of course, blink to his power crystal where you want to interrupt him as quickly as possible, yep. else he will get those damage and haystacks. Free Marcy not far behind. They did accrue another death on the board they're up to eight now uh, but they're doing everything quite similarly but just a bit slower yeah they're splitting their pulls up just a bit more than method and they're starting to fall further and further behind in what is a very tight race right now and i feel like those kind of small differences in timings come back to like free marcy came into this tournament clearly with a, quite a lot of flexibility we saw that in that first series they went rogue rogue warrior now it's back to you know a more usual composition of windwalker windwalker and the affliction log Having that flexibility, yes, it's cool to be able to just apply it to any situation, but then it means you're, you know, a jack of all trades, a master of none. Sorry, Jack, I didn't mean you. Uh, so it's very, very important to know. 
didn't you? I did. <laughs> uh, of course. I, and, and, you know, what's setting them apart, I mean, the, the small deaths here and there, of course, there's a two-death difference between the teams. We do see Bloodlust popped over for Free Marcy on the right side. But the, what's setting Method ahead right now is they did the entire trash room pull with Core Stalax. They did the two sentries, the two anomalies with Ivanir. Free Marcy opted to kill the trash first and then the boss. And, I mean, by doing mm -hmm. the riskier play and pulling it off, Method has been able to pull ahead, pulling the last 10% of trash that they need. They just have to be careful as to where the spirit is. We can kind of see it on the right side of the screen there. It seems to be patrolling away from them. And once they kill these last Withered, they will be able to move over to the final boss. Yeah, they're, they're quite literally setting the pace here in Method. And, unfortunately, for Free Marcy, they cannot keep up currently with their kind of middle-of-the-road, very safe kind of strategy. One of them, with more Monks actually dying over on Free Marcy's side. Really want to get him up nice and fast, but that means now no combat reses later on down the line for potentially the final boss. Yeah, I mean, there's not too much danger left for him in the dungeon once Ivernair goes down, but you never know what's going to happen. Method and A moving over to the last boss. I would like to point out, of course, that both teams are now past the 15 minute mark in the dungeon, so we will not see a 15 minute timer in this Aww. dungeon. With almost as flawless as a run that Method has had, Vandros is finally engaged to phase boss at 50%. The boss will disappear. He'll be put into one of the boss rooms. I believe it's been normalized to Nalteria's room. We'll have to double check, but it has been normalized to which room they get ported to. They'll have to work their way back before the boss finishes the cast, yep. kill some mobs on the way. Otherwise, what you see is what you get here. He will recontinue his phase one once re-engaged. Yeah, you want to move away from those bombs, and then from there, he will end up doing his big pushback. Sometimes you actually see this pushback. People will position themselves next to walls to actually deal with it. However, it's not tyrannical. Fortified makes it a little bit more lenient uh, to their position in the situation. So, so far, so good. Not much that's going to kill them, really, here on, on Vandross, unless something catastrophically goes wrong. It's just really a slip up of a Windwalker maybe getting clipped by one of these geode explosions, but they seem to be kiting the boss quite well, trying to keep him around that front area so that when he ports, even getting that last second or two of DPS redot for the Blood DK and the the the, uh, the Warlock, of course, as they get ported out. Vandros now at 50 per uh, just about at 50%. Do well to drop the Chaos Bringer here. Now, the trick here is you want to drop the Chaos Bringer. You want to re-CC it yep. for one minute, of course, and then as you get ported, you get back in, and you have one minute to get back to the Chaos Bringer before the CC breaks so that you can re-enslave it and get started on the boss again. One would assume that's enough time, Sloot, but you never know. <laughs> you never know with these speed races, and they're just going to be able to move through on these. Obviously, there's ads that eventually kind of time lock someone. Uh, can be annoying, um, usually, though, quite easy to deal with. You, don't, you definitely don't want two at any one time, uh, but you can see they're just kind of mitigating that quite nicely by just skirting around the edges. Some of them, they do have to kill. Some of them are pretty impossible to actually dodge. Uh, like these couple, for example. Ooh, on the right-hand side. Yeah, and a small oopsie-daisy here from Free Marcy as they just complete, or not complete their trash to 99%. They have their eye on one Withered on the side there, a couple Withered. Unfortunately, the Forlorn Spirit was blocking their way, so they had to wait a bit longer time. Now they're grabbing this last Fiend, and they'll start heading downstairs to Vandross, but Method and A has already returned mm. back to Vandross. Well re-enslaved the Chaos Bringer in the top right of the screen, of course, for those at home, and they're just chiseling away this health. That's one of those richer, get richer moments uh, when it comes to, and again, no, I don't mean you rich, but overall, you know, when they've got those kind of set patrols, if you're able to get the initial kind of cycle, then yes, you can get even further ahead. But if you miss that cycle because you went fast enough in the dungeon, then you're being punished even more down the line in the dungeon. And that's just what Free Marcy has to deal with now. <laughs> Once yep. again, they're stuck behind oh, no. another spirit just before Vandros, unable to pull him. They've aggroed one of the acidic biles on the side, the green mob, so just have a ton of health and leave a nasty poison on the tank. But too little, too late, I'm afraid, as Vandros is now sub 10% entering those single tar uh, single digits yeah. for Method and A. And I mean, just, Claire, it's a dominant performance for Method and A here. Absolutely. Only six deaths overall. Very, very strong. And they were able to do it in a significantly faster time than our previous. This, this is truly a battle of who is better prepared for the dungeon, who is better with this composition. Complete mirror, free Marcy versus men at Method and A headed into Upper Karazhan. I mean, you know, heading into this, Kolaris, mm. just that these are not really the scariest affixes. No. We're an Upper Karazhan diving into this. Upper Karazhan, you know, teams usually associate something scary with tyrannical or what have you. And it's just, you know, it's really going to be, I mean, you know, a kind of, kind of joke to say it's going to be which team does more damage faster here. But yep. not a lot of danger mechanically really coming out of these affixes for the two teams as they get started here, grabbing those forlorn spirits. Lots of damage coming in for Method and A on purpose, as, of course, JB has already run up the stairs getting ready to res them is similarly uh, as
as we see the other dungeons for Cathedral. Yeah, knowing that you can actually skip out on even some of these uh, constructions down towards the bottom as well, that actually helps out quite nicely. The damaged golems, of course, because uh, the, the first one, I mean, is fortified, so it takes a little bit of time to actually kill that one off. Uh, you're going to have to deal with the other one on the other side. Uh, I can't even remember the name of it. The one that steals your soul. Which one's that one? Uh, that is, there you of go. course, uh, this big robot that we see right in front of us, <laughs> the Nullifier. Now it casts there nullification on some of the players. Uh, one of the players, actually, once every 30 seconds or so, and they will receive a 100% damage buff once they reconnect with their purple lost soul in the same spot in the room that you're seeing on the left side of the screen for Method NA every time, which is part of the reason as to why you're seeing both teams grab some yeah. of the extra trash in Curator's room and get ready to cleave it down with that buff. Me being a ginger, I have a racial ability to actually avoid the nullifier completely because, you know, no soul, so that's how that goes uh, in real life. But as you said, they just clean everything up in the middle, so that's nice, and the nullifier will eventually die off, and they can go into Curator, and because it's not tyrannical, it's not that big a threat. No, and, you know, I didn't want to be the one to say the thing about the ginger, but I'm glad we finally yeah. had this talk. It's a weight <laughs> off my shoulders. They do move into Curator's room, and you're right. I mean, Necrotic is really only the big threat in here, and it's only a couple of the pulls with multiple mobs not a threat quaking is already something just pay attention to it and fortified only affecting the minimal mm. amount of trash in this dungeon curator now being pulled by method na first boss of the dungeon they do spread out immediately for that quaking and recollapse as they want uh, to spawn and bait that electric discharge void zone on the ground as a unit and save as much space as they can you can see all in unison moving outwards and that's actually one dynamic that can, it can have enough cause of a hiccup on curator because of course most of the time 99 percent of the time you want to be stacked you want to bait all of those statics on the floor right on top of one another basically so that you can just keep moving back as a group as a formated unit uh, and then being able to kill off the void energies and then eventually once creator reaches uh, you know the lack of mana he's gonna go into his evocation phase and then you can really burst him down yeah so this volatile energy energies do need to be kept in check in one minute after the pull is when we see our first evocation phase it lasts 20 seconds and during that time the boss will take a hundred percent increase of damage would expect to see of course the blood decays if they're running blood mirror to run into the void zones during that time, get their uh, DRWs out, whatever it may be. Everybody's going to be yeah. using their cooldowns during that phase. And we'll see if that Bloodlust comes out as well. Likely it will, although some groups do actually hold on to it and end up using it on Shade Who Deep. So we'll have to see here in just a moment as we're hitting our first phases of evocation. We see Method and A's button light up as they pop theirs for their evocation, looking to down Curator within this one. Yeah, so really starting to ramp up the damage now. Likewise, on the other side, it's always interesting to see. It's a very minor thing, and it doesn't really matter too much, but I always like to see how people move with the statics to kind of sometimes you see people just circling around the boss but one thing that's very important is to reposition yourself just as you're killing off curator because you can save quite a bit of time going to the end of the uh, runway as you can see here with method na already positioning themselves as close to the portal as possible and just diving on through and both teams honestly killing curator with almost robotic precision as method na jumps down and gets a, once again just a minimal amount of trash here a lot of optional trash but they do opt to get some of it out of the way now these fell bats do sit in the air and cast some of the swirlies on the ground. The only way to get them down is with taunts. The DK having two of them, of course, access to the dark command and the death grip as well. Gets two of them down immediately. Can get a bit of help from the DPS as well. Yep grab the pyromancer and they cleave it all down together it's especially important considering they actually do the skip at the beginning but that's usually you know in regionals where we saw a lot of people kind of have that percent but getting some percent here is very important and probably we'll see some bats later on sometimes you can actually skip this little fella and you're going to probably see method na try and go for that here uh, and then maybe pick up some rats on the way i like picking up the rats wouldn't really say he's the smallest of fellas he's yeah. about three times taller than any of the players here but he does blink around and drop aggro so the tank does have to be quick to taunt or death grip him back we do see a death over there for from Dark on Method and A, they'll get him up in just a moment And uh, as they head over into Medivh's room. Now, we're in a mirror comp. Both teams should have sufficient interrupts coming up as they both have access to those Windwalkers, melee innately having a lower cooldown on their interrupts, usually 15 seconds. Of course, we see 12 seconds on Shaman as well. Uh, but they should have no problem with that as long as they communicate well, especially if the tanks opt to eat some of those piercing missiles. Yeah, they, they don't mind that too much, uh, not interrupting everything. The Frostbite's really important to actually interrupt, of course. If you don't interrupt it, then someone gets frozen and you actually have to to use one of the bolts to get them out. See the spread for the quaking there as well. So really good positioning, mind you, uh, at the moment. And then it really depends on which phase is coming along. Mitt, though, actually goes down which isn't the best of situations there for Method NA. That is less than ideal having a player die there. Fortunately, they do still have access to their battle res, which they get up immediately. There's now an increasing death difference between the two teams, growing to three uh, methods. Uh, Method NA's five versus Free Marcy's two. Free Marcy just cruising along through this shade as well. First uh, phase that we're going to see for both teams, which is normalized, is, of course, this Guardian's image phase. 
the boss will disappear and spawn these three guardians on the side these uh arcane birds if yep. you will that explode for increasing damage on the group now the two uh, teams opt to kind of kill two at the same time quickly and then kill the third one you see all sorts of strategies with this yeah i mean even uh, on this if you actually focus one down with quaking then it can get a little bit you can actually lose a little bit of dps when you have to spread out and try and go on it especially with the amount of heavy focus on towards melee important thing to note as well when you're fighting medivh a lot of range classes can sometimes have just straight up avoid the inferno bolt by say using blinks say using portals anything of the like so you you saw JB there just blink to the side, completely avoid that, and just soak up uh, effectively a full cast's time's worth from Shade Medivh. And you can see JB there doing as little healing as possible as he just keeps pumping solo Wraths into the boss. Free Marcy now out of the Guardian phase as well as everybody resumes back on Shade of Medivh. Not too much difference between the two teams at the moment. Method A does have that 5% trash advantage as they opted to pull oh. some of those bats earlier, but we are seeing once again another dodge coming I love in. It. And we have the Flame Wreath. Now this ability is absolutely mm -hmm. lethal. If if anybody crosses one of those borders or dies while within one of those borders, it will explode and essentially one-shot the group. And that's why, actually, especially with Quaking, you have to be pre-positioned in such a way so you're not really uh, uh, causing any problems, especially if, like, two melee were to get it, then it would be kind of very, very problematic. But that's not to be the case. You see Marvin K there uh, just stood outside slightly. And likewise, Eri on the other side not doing too bad for themselves. Shed and Medivh both falling on either side. And very, very close at the moment, but Method NA with their trash strategy is looking good. And just move around in this one. Just slightly slower than Free Marcy, plus they have that 15 second death. We really have to keep an eye on that with how this run is going. Both teams pretty fortunate there to have Inferno Bolts mostly spawn on people that did not have the Flame Wreath, otherwise you just kind of have to eat it to the face, yeah. and you require a fair bit of extra healing. And down the rabbit hole we go now. We have a bit of a, an AFK period here to enjoy the scenery, if you will, as we work our way down to the Mana Devourer. That's right. As we all suddenly grow smaller, using their Avalanche Potions is quite useful because uh, you just get down there and uh, it looks lovely. It's 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 absolutely lovely. We will land on top of some books, of course. A lot of the covers of these books, that we, as we've seen in previous regionals, are of uh, two romantic lovers, oftentimes referred to Jack and I as well. For some reason, I'm not really quite sure. But we are moving down the rabbit hole. They, players will have here a temporary immunity to fall damage. Yeah. Not only do they hit the books, but you'll see some, uh, and of course, I don't mean in a studious way, but they will <laughs> quite literally hit the books on the floor and also jump off the edge of the last book. So no danger there from the death, but they will have to make sure to kind of tread through all those Quinn rats down there and the spiders as well. There you are. Beautiful. I love it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, the <laughs> next exam, of course, is going to be that Mana Devourer. Not too much trash usually really gets pulled in this area. And I'm wondering as well uh, how they're going to deal with this. Usually you take it to the corner. You kind of... Uh, deny the amount of spawning room some of these mechanics are going to have and sometimes as well very uh, not too commonly but sometimes you see blood dk is actually switching to the cloak uh legendary in order to be able to pop your ams have m more uptime on it soak a load of those balls and then from that point actually get a good healing off them as well but you are i mean you know you can pre-ms the dot and mm -hmm. the dot itself every stack actually does increase your damage done by five percent so you can kind of hang on to them if it's okay uh with the healer and you survive you know warlocks is pretty typical to see a warlock take a stack or two and just yeah. kind of drain and heal through it and do as, uh, a bit more damage to the boss but both teams do indeed grab it to the corner now these orbs spawn every 30 seconds the trick here is by dragging it to the corner not only do you cut 270 degrees off Basically. where the orbs can spawn but those orbs that would have spawned in those 270 degrees spawn right on top of the boss right in the middle of that hitbox you can see that ams popped on the left side of the screen from band name as he sits in the middle of the boss's hitbox and soaks all those easy orbs and when it came to tyrannical when you when we saw like the time trials as well this was actually a boss that caused kind of a lot of issues uh, we saw a lot of wind walk among heavy compositions and it was only a plus 22 mind you uh but there was points where there will be so many orbs eventually catching towards the boss and then an explosion would occur and cause white but these guys well versed it's not tyrannical shouldn't be too much of a bother uh, you know we did forget to mention of course that if too many orbs are soaked into the boss yes. that's that's boom, boom and that's it <laughs> almost as if a flame wreath would go off on the previous boss so you want to make sure to absorb those now free marcy having finished uh, just a bit earlier with shade of medivh really not having too much advantage and uh, of course as i say that they now take a four or five percent lead on the boss but they were pretty neck and neck for a moment there but free marcy should be kind of having the lead Lead just a bit for the rest of the dungeon. There's only so many ways you can go with strategies in this dungeon as it is quite linear. There's not too much trash you can pull. Yeah, definitely. You're going to have some more little mana devourers soon and usually we actually see a massive pull uh, right after this big mana devourer which is technically still a little de mana devourer but they're little so now they're big uh, and then the little mana devourers, this is a weird sentence, are all going to get pulled together for a big pull. 
Aha. My mind just exploded. But yeah. Method and A getting ready <laughs> did to pull these small mana devourers, which used to be big mana devourers, and combining here into yep. the big pull on the side, Rapid yep. God. Indeed, they will grab everything. Now, the only danger here really actually lies on the tank. This is one of those dangerous, quote unquote, pulls just because of Necrotic. There's a lot of mobs hitting the tank here. You can accrue those stacks really high, but overall, it's pretty easy to kite them. Now, this trash does have some more mechanics to the boss, as they are all part of the same mana devourer mm -hmm. family. Um, you will have to absorb the orbs that come in from the side because these devourers, as well as we can see, do a ton of damage to the group if they absorb too many of those orbs. Tank safely kites over. They finally down all the trash for Method and A side, and they're heading over to the bridge. But Free Marcy having a bit of trouble on the right side. Yeah, Breath actually died off, and likewise, we're seeing Arrow kind of low as well, very close to death as well. He's going to have to dodge a little a few of those orbs. Should be fine. Uh, they got quite a bit of the trash done, but not quite as much as Method and A. And bear in mind, Method and A took the first map. This was the counter pick from Free Marcy. And so far, Method NA is running away with this. I mean, this is the series that is going to make you sleep well tonight or not, knowing that you achieve that yep. kind of trip to BlizzCon between these two teams. So Method NA re really looking just to close it out here and not take it to a game three. They are missing a bit of trash, though. This um, chess event coming up only gives, I believe, 7 or 8%, mm -hmm. something like that. So likely what will happen is they will destroy the king here in a moment, which will, of course, be vulnerable as soon as one of the pieces die for a few seconds. Once the king reaches 30%, he will no longer put his invulnerability shield up. Once that happens, there's going to be a bit of RP, and during that time, the members will kind of backtrack and grab some more of those bats that we saw earlier in the dungeon. Yeah, definitely. They're, and those bats aren't too threatening either, which is nice, because it's just easy percentage on easy trash. So killing off this final night will once again... Well, actually, it's not the final night at all. It's a, a night will eventually allow the vulnerability on the king, and they'll start working on that. Uh, and event, which per, what percentage is it that he becomes vulnerable regardless? 30, if 30%. I'm not mistaken. Okay, so uh, you can just try and get him down to that as quickly as possible uh, but again fortified being the case it takes quite a little while here you can see on the right hand side as well free marcy looking to try and catch up uh, they do have a better percent when it comes to overall trash now after cleaning up some more of those mana devourers but at the moment it's looking a bit di uh, dicey for them yeah free marcy does opt to actually kill the trash on the bridge where we saw method in there earlier actually use their invis pods so they'll be locked out pretty much for the remainder of the dungeon from using any offensive pod king does reach sub 30 percent now for method and a as they look to finish off the encounter and then backtrack and grab some of those bats free marcy in the meantime on the right screen working for some of the bats making sure uh, for some of the trash but making sure to avoid the bat kind of aoe that's hitting the ground we do see the invis come out now though now some people might be asking as well why do they kill the king and then backtrack for the bats that's because usually you send one person off to start the rp which takes a while anyway so you can kill bats while that's going on although that being said oh, okay no the bats um i <laughs> normally i see them pulling from a little bit higher but they're actually pulling a few more than I kind of anticipate because normally when I see this it's like well we only need two bats but they actually needed a third one uh, to try and go a little bit further. Yeah I mean they usually give about a percent and a half two percent mm -hmm. but you certainly want to make sure you get it, uh, as many of them as you need for that hundred percent otherwise it's going to be bat news bears. Free Marcy working over for the remainder of their chess event. Method and A what you don't see of course on screen is just what you hinted to Kalaris that RP is already running right now and by the time the rest of the team kind of gets up this loopy chess table uh, they will have access to Visa Doom the last boss of the dungeon. Do you think they should start selling this the loopy chess table and it's like oh maybe you know 3d chess was enough actually I, as long as i get royalties i'm totally fine with that <laughs> okay then we're gonna be heading over to visa doom now to get things going and actually you know as a, as a pug it's kind of one of the more notorious bosses uh, in terms of actually execution and dealing with it uh, quite a few abilities of course uh, one being which uh, there's actually the the ships eventually start raining down shots that you're gonna or a beam i should say you're gonna have to dodge and kite ideally you would like that to be on like a healer or something like that uh, but it looks like it's not on the healer it looks like a eh, tank is not too bad either no not too bad he does eat a bit of it it does do a fair bit of damage so yeah. you want to move out making sure to rotate a triplicate interrupt order on the boss as it does do starts to stack a fair bit of damage on the tank it's not too bad you can pre ams it can also dispel it but might as well uh, they have enough interrupts might as well get that done one of the big kind of abilities we have to talk about on this boss are those chaotic energy balls that go out on this platform one player on the next platform two and of course on the last uh, platform three players will get debuffed with these and after eight seconds explode shooting out those orbs all over the platform if you come in contact with them they do a ton of damage yep. and you can dispel some players
players early to kind of buy yourself a bit of space. But Method and A moving over to the second ship right now. Visadoom staring his eye right down the middle. And I mean, if looks could kill. Yeah, the mean green beam, my friend, is what I like to call it. And sometimes it does knock you off, which is not fun. Uh, so you definitely don't want that. And uh, many, many a player playing against Visadoom will remember such phrases as let the barrage begin or something to that effect. And you've got to dodge out some of those green swirlies as well. And I think it's like multiple people actually get the uh, little uh, energy orbs or the chaotic orbs or whatever you want to call them. So sometimes you have to spread out quite far from one another. Make sure you're not just getting that overlap. And you can already see one of the monks out on the edge. I'm pretty sure that's why. Yeah, just in case, just yeah. in case. Visadoom now reaching the 33% mark, getting ready to port over to the final ship. And uh, the team, of course, will follow suit free. Marcy just having now pulled Visadoom onto the smaller right side of the screen. On this platform, everything stays the same, but there will be some bats kind of pooping some guano down on the players, which splashes for damage. You want to make sure you move out of that. And these Doom Lords will be here as well. The sentries, you want to make sure you're grouping them all together. It does debuff the tank with a slow and an increased dot, but you just want to make your way over to the boss as quickly as possible and get as much damage in as you can. Bloodlust does come yeah. out for the teams now. And, you know, he's channeling Stabilized Rift right now, so technically you don't really have to interrupt that too quickly. You can, especially on a fortified setting, you can just kind of let that keep going. It's going to deny some damage whilst you're dealing with some of the ads and then as long as you make sure that the cast doesn't go off uh visit doom will die nicely method na though on in the Ooh, count bad name pick. Going Ooh, bad name. Ooh, bad name He's going fine. down there but they do keep on and, and no problem <laughs> he goes down rich we have to slow down with these eye jokes because they're getting corny and cornea <laughs> oh, <man>. oh no <laughs> method na is going straight to blizzcon they're gonna be able to do it in a 2-0 as well and they are, will be joining the likes of Shell's Angels. Such a dominant performance coming out of them, Ted. It was very enjoyable to watch. I, I mean, that dungeon was neck and neck for a while. It, mm. it was just that one slip up. And, you know, we kind of hinted at, to it at the beginning of the dungeon. There's only a couple of dangerous pulls here as far as the fortified trash is concerned. And that's just the one, unfortunately, Free Marcy had a little hiccup on. And I'll say congratulations. How does it feel knowing that you're the second team here to qualify to go to BlizzCon? Thank you. Feels great. Uh, very happy with our performance for the most part and looking to improve all the time, but I think we left a pretty good mark out there, so happy with it. Yeah, speaking of improving time, that Arcway performance was really incredible. What was going on in your head after you finished that Arcway? How did you guys go so fast in there? Lots of practice is the best answer. We figured out what works for us and we kept doing it and kept improving on it and, you know, mistakes happen and just got to move past them live and not get hung up on them. All right, so Mitt, so you're Coach Mitt, so what does it mean to be Coach Mitt of Method NA? So I came up with it a long time ago with uh, our boy Shaq and uh, been coaching Mitt ever since, but mostly just a name and looking to improve on things and, you know, help out the team whatever, whatever way I can. Thank you so much, Mitt. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you very much. And that name, so we're really going to see here who, which one comes out on top and it's going to be a really, really strong uh, competition there. That lower bracket, that is some Ooh. scary <laughs> stuff, though. We're going to start off there and salute we are going to see some teams sent home to kick off the day. Uh, tomorrow is uh, pretty much nothing but eliminations. We have five